and welcome to Newly Qualified Conversations, a series of video podcasts. I'm currently sat with Gillian O'Regan. Gillian has been with Michael Page for quite a long time. Um, and Gillian specialises in the top 100 accounting firms in practice. Um, and so, yeah, often people qualify in their ACA, ACCA, CTA sometimes, and aren't quite sure on the different routes to take once qualified. So Gillian, it'd be great if we can just talk through the different options we can look at for people in practice. Sure. Um, so yeah, in a nutshell, can you just talk me through the top 100 accounting firms and like what that looks like for someone who's newly qualified? Sure. Um, so we see a lot of CVs coming in from um, different backgrounds in top 100 accounting firms. So we cover everything from big four opportunities right the way through to mid-tier top 50 and the small independents as well. They can be um, quite boutique and quite specialist. So depending on where you want your career to go, uh, we can guide you in the right direction there and hopefully give you a whole range of opportunities to choose from. Cool. Because um, obviously, there's from, from what we know, there's a big variety of different types of clients across the top 100 space right so you've obviously got the big four top six um mm -hmm. clients through to like the top 20 top 50 down to the top 100 accounting mm -hmm. firms um so say if someone someone was sitting their aca or doing their acca qualifications in quite a small like boutique firm mm -hmm. one man band kind yeah. of vibe um yeah. <laughs> Once they're qualified, what would you advise them to do? Like, what's the best route for them to take? Yeah, it's a good question. Again, it will very much depend on the candidate and what they want to do. Um, but we can guide them if they want to upskill and get a broader experience and larger exposure. Generally, they will be, most people tend to say to us they want bigger practice experience. So that could mean going to a well-known accountancy firm, mm -hmm. generally speaking in central London is yep. where most of them are based. Um, and they will be able to broaden your um, skill sets in terms of the sectors of clients you're working with and the size of clients. So you know, you could look at things in the top 50 or big four, top six, for example, that could become more specialist or give you an avenue to specialise. If you've only done a tiny bit of audit, for example, you could up skill on your audit and take right. that to, a, you know, 80, 90, 100%. Or you could choose to, if you've only done sort of 20, 30, 40, 50% audit, you could go accounts and tax. So there's lots of different options that we cover. Okay. Um, so it's just making sure we put you in the right direction. So I guess it's getting the balance right between looking at the kind of current exposure you have sector wise with clients you're working with, and then also the audit to accounts to tax exposure you have and yeah. like getting the balance right between all of them. Yeah. yeah, and we've got different teams that can help with that as well. So it's just, I think it's all dependent on, you know, where you're wanting to go longer term. Yeah. So I always kind of say, look at the bigger picture mm -hmm. and let us know know what makes you happy and what what you want in terms of your career because so many firms just work so differently that yeah. we can kind of channel your um your career prospects to give you the best opportunities yeah cool okay and I um obviously as a researcher at Michael Page I often speak to candidates who they might have really really good exposure to a certain type of client so like doing the audits for like mm -hmm. a law firm or something but longer term they might want to go in-house doing like financial services sure. and like work for like a you know bank <laughs> kind of type um place and so my advice often is go to a larger firm potentially and get that sector exposure yeah. feel what it's like to work with financial services clients yeah. or whatever it may be yeah. um what's your advice around that would you say yeah 100 percent. i definitely agree with you if mm -hmm. you know where you want to go and um, we've got to make sure you're getting that exposure in your next career step and um, because the longer you leave that the harder it will be to get into yeah. it so there are firms again that will offer you specialist divisions mm -hmm. um, and some firms will be able to give you a little bit of it but is it enough to get you where you want to go so again we can talk to you about which firms will give you the opportunity that is probably going to enhance your career the best. Of course, it's kind of like balancing it all out and yeah. just seeing what, what works best. And also as yeah. well, it's like short term, long term, isn't it? Yeah. I, I think, agree, yeah. 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 Some candidates will think, oh, you know, short term, I just want to get out of audit and I want to just I know, fly. Yeah. We hear that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think that is the thing. I think sometimes you need to think about like how long after you've qualified do you want to stay in audit and what's yep. going to be, you like you say, like the long term, short term goal. Mm -hmm. um, it may be that another year or so is the best mm -hmm. thing for you because yeah. you'll be almost a step ahead of some of the other candidates when you are applying if you do want to go industry. Yeah. Um, so we can look at those options as well cool. just to make sure that step is worthwhile. Yeah. Okay, great. And um, a buzzword that always comes up, so I speak to candidates maybe three times a week about this, <laughs> um, is corporate finance. Yeah, I knew that was coming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so corporate finance is a space that like is so popular, especially at the moment. I think yeah. like, the last couple of years, I've, mm -hmm. there's been a definite increase in candidates wanting this space. Mm -hmm. What is your kind of like uh, viewpoint on how, how someone can move into this area without having previous exposure to yeah. any of that? We get it a lot. It mm. seems to be like the really attractive space at the moment has been for good few years now mm -hmm. I think 
the, the best thing you need to, you do need to up your audit experience essentially and yeah. um, you need to go into a firm that are going to have a specialist corporate finance team mm -hmm. if you can get in there if you're in a firm that have a bit of exposure just try and ask them to get on some projects that will yeah. give you some exposure and like then when you are making yeah, yeah definitely mm -hmm. and then you know there will if you get some in in your role your jump into that will be easier but you are going to need to upskill on your audit and just get that yeah. bigger exposure and mm -hmm. um, the competition is is just Fierce. ridiculously high yeah so yeah I would definitely say up your audit mm. and go bigger firm yeah and often as well like clients are really keen to often hire internally for those types of mm. roles aren't they because they have so many seniors yeah. who are like wanting that space yeah they retain their staff yeah. by doing that and yeah. everybody puts their hand up for it and they will wait for that to come up so yeah. it isn't there's not loads of job opportunities mm -hmm. in that space that come to agent mm -hmm. um, but when they come there's a, a huge demand for them so it is just trying to make sure your CV is a real standout yeah yeah I guess and we can help with that as well sure we can help with CV help <laughs> advice, tips, anything you want, we can help. Um, okay, cool. And so what would your general advice be for someone who is about to qualify? So maybe they've they've like just set their final exams, sat, sorry, and mm -hmm. they're looking to like start thinking about what might be next for them. Like in general, what kind of advice mm. would you give someone in that position? Yeah, I think my, my motto that I kind of always say to people is just try and be prepared for every eventuality. So yeah. Even before you've set your final exam, you can kind of understand in your own mind where you want to go. So mm. if you are prepared um, in that you do the research before and you get yourself ahead of the game mm. and ahead of other candidates, you can put yourself in a good position to go to some attractive interviews that are interesting yeah. for you. Mm -hmm. um, but do be prepared. I mean, whether you were going to be successful or unsuccessful with your final exam, we would still be able to help you. Yeah. But essentially, with any interviews, any exams, any career search, it, my motto is just always be prepared. But I think, look for something that's going to make you happy yeah. Um, yeah and there are opportunities out there that are quite different in terms of you know where firms can take you or what they can offer yeah. and hybrid working and all yeah. that sorts of thing how, how um around hybrid working how flexible do you feel like clients are being because I know yeah. since post pandemic mm. I think there's definitely been a shift yeah 100 percent so there's been a huge shift, I think, well, definitely since COVID. I mean, we saw it a little bit before, actually, because mm. I think practice firms are really trying to, and they have been for a long time, been aware that they've been viewed as a bit more traditional than some in-house roles, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but they have become a lot more modern, a lot more flexible. There's some brilliant firms um, out there that they do work differently. They all have separate policies, but yeah. there's a lot of opportunities where you can work um, in the office two or three days a week. Yeah, I've started working on a few remote roles, actually, mm. which include audit and account. Um, which is pure remote, which I've never seen before until this year. Um, but yeah, they do vary a lot and well-being is huge yeah. out there and people's happiness and looking after staff. So I think my advice, generally going back to the question, is be prepared and um, just look for your happiness in terms of the long-term career because you don't need to do another year in audit if it makes you unhappy. Yeah. But you could do another year in audit with a firm that understand your goals and mm -hmm. they will gear your preferences around what you enjoy great yeah and also can we cover a bit of um basically like level titles oh yeah because something mm -hmm. that comes up a lot of candidates will be like well I want to stay where I am because I can get to assistant manager sure. or I want to stay where I am because I can get to supervisor or whatever mm -hmm. it may be um and my uh, viewpoint is that all the different practices like practice firms accounting firms call different levels different things they do yeah yeah so what what's to caveat that, what what do you think we can do to like help people on, on educating around that? Yeah, that's a really good question. And something that um, you might want to look at is we've got the 2023 skills and, yes. and salary guide. So yeah. we prepare that so that everything is transparent for all candidates and mm -hmm. clients so that it's an open page in terms of how much you can expect to receive as a salary um, and how much clients will expect to be paying everybody fairly. Yeah. Um, but definitely look at that. And um, yeah, title wise, I would say it does vary depending mm. on firms, but a lot of firms will give you like a supervisor or assistant manager title on qualification now, yeah. which has changed probably in the last few years mm -hmm. anyway. Um, some will still call you a senior, um, but it does depend on the firm structure. So I would say really look at the overall package. Titles will change, but mm -hmm. more so more so you're probably at qualified level going to be a senior, uh, sorry, a supervisor or an assistant manager, generally Fine. speaking. Yeah, because yeah. what, what I often do as well is tell people to look at how many years post-qualified like, is the position. Sure. So it's like if someone's like one year post-qualified, mm. 
the the standard level is this 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 yeah this. if they're about to qualify they could be yeah exactly. training accountant or it's yeah. senior audit senior sometimes if yeah. training so um yeah I often gauge it off that yeah and and that's the thing is I think some firms will call their trainees up until qualification they might call them a trainee even though they've got three years experience but some will also call them a semi senior or a senior so we yeah. just need to look at the content of the role yeah and also your package so yeah you know if you're getting paid a newly qualified rate which within audit is going to be sort of 52 plus generally speaking mm-hmm. yes okay. you can get a bit more than that as well um, but if your title is a senior or a supervisor if you're getting the package and the content is the same mm-hmm. if if title is important to you obviously you might look at different firms but the content of the role is essentially probably going to be the same thing yeah great okay cool so because uh, i know the bandings salary bandings have definitely gone up they have since like well, yeah. when we first when i oh first started my gosh, like, yeah they've gone up so ago. much <laughs> <laughs> which is good <laughs> which is good They're trying to compete with the in- uh, in-house um, options is which is, good. is um, good okay great so i feel like um you've given like a really cohesive and i feel like i have a new fresh understanding <laughs> of what these markets look like um and just one last thing i would ask because i get asked this sometimes mm. If someone is like part qualified and looking to leave and they're like not happy in their current firm, mm-hmm. is that an option we can help them then? Or yes. is it best to wait when fully qualified? What's no, your... definitely. I've placed so many part qualified candidates. Cool. Um, yeah, I place anyone from trainee level right the way through to partner. Oh, great. Um, cool. And the rest of the team can as well, for sure. But part qualified, for sure, you can definitely find a good role. I yeah. mean, you don't need to have a certain number of exams or anything done. But Mm-mm-mm. generally speaking, if you've just got professional level done, you've got a good couple of years experience right. under your belt. So that's absolutely, we cool. can 100% help. Okay, cool. As, yeah, because um, yeah, I think for me, like the ideal is for someone to be ACA fully, fully qualified and then. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, I think some candidates don't realise that if they're not happy or mm. if something's not working, obviously there's always options out there yeah. for them. But also if someone is has sat their exams and awaiting the result or is due to sit their final exams Mm -hmm. we can actually get a conditional offer yeah you can because some people are surprised they're like oh I can get an offer so people people know that once they then get their result through sure they know where they're going to be moving right. to. And the big firms do that quite a lot yeah. as well. Um, so they might wait until your exam results come through, but they're, mm. they're happy to wait for that. That's yeah. not a problem at all. But I would definitely say get ahead of the game if yeah. you can, um, because we've we've had uh, lots of placements that have waited even six months for candidates. Yeah. So you yeah. can decide where you would like to go mm-hmm. um, and they will wait. Um, and most, most people are giving between one and three months notice anyway mm, at the moment. Quite standard. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Great. Excellent. Okay, great. Thank you for your time, Gillian. If you're newly qualified or about to qualify or just a finance professional in general and you found this helpful, we actually have other videos that we're releasing too, so you can check those out, um, covering financial services, industry and commerce in all different spaces. Um, also, please look out for our contact details below and contact us if you would like to have a further conversation about your career and how we can help you further.